and welcome to Indianomics. Uh, this edition comes from uh, the Neem Rana conference, from the sidelines of this economists conference. And I have with me one of the foremost economists of India, Professor Arvind Panagaria. Dr. Panagaria, thank you very much for sparing time for us. In fact, you have come to India at a very interesting juncture where we have seen the Fed pivot to uh, dovishness. Yes. So my first question to you is really about how you see the U.S. economy next year. Uh, are you also in the camp that we should expect quick rate cuts and maybe three rate cuts? <laughs> it's very difficult to predict what the Fed will do, but certainly, you know, it has announced uh, that it is going in the dovish mode, um, whether it's going to be two cuts or three, uh, but it's going to be uh, somewhat uh, uh, relaxed monetary policy now in the United States. But uh, that would presume that we are going to have a soft landing, uh, that uh, it well, will not be a recession. Oh, yeah. Are you confident that at least we will not have a very deep recession? Well, look, you know, uh, I've been hearing about this recession for <laughs> you know, ever since the COVID sort of ended and, uh, yes. um, you know, the speculation was always, and each time I've come to India, you know, I hear about this recession happening, but it hasn't happened uh, in the U.S. economy. Uh, and particularly, you know, every month when the job numbers came in the United States, uh, 100,000 or more, yes. you know, being added yes. continuously and so when people ask me here you know I'll, my counter question would be where is the recession yes. uh, and so I certainly think that you know lending will be soft it has been I mean you know mm -hmm. uh, uh, in a way quite a time quite a bit of time has already passed yes. and therefore you know uh, uh, because recession has not happened we are still talking in terms of yes. is it going to be going lending to but the lending I think has happened already okay so it has been a soft landing you would say uh, you would say at least so far uh, so how do we look at next year do you think it will still be a year of strong growth uh, a reasonably strong uh, global economy well certainly the United States you know, European economy is not doing as well uh, you know we you know Germany for example is not soft. in a great s situation uh, on the other, our side, uh, the Asian side, Japan is mm -hmm. not doing still very well. Um, so, you know, but but the United States economy certainly is kicking quite well, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, unexpectedly. So, you know, in, uh, mm -hmm. the the uh, usual kind of long-term growth rate in the U.S. that you've been observing is about two percent a year. Uh, but uh, the last number was five point two. Yeah. So the last number was uh, quite incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't think we'll get there, uh, but uh, the fear I have really is that, you know, um, uh, the inflation rate uh, is still at 3%. Yes. Uh, it has not returned to the 2% level, which is where it has been uh, for several years. Um, Fed is loosening, uh, and so, you know, could it revive inflation. I think that is the main fear I have. Okay. Uh, but, you know, uh, on, on the recession side, I don't see a reason to be concerned because, uh, in a way, loosening uh, uh, the, the, the breaks on money uh, would actually move the economy uh, uh, perhaps to a faster growth. That's true. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm asking you this is what should we be prepared for in India? We've had a stronger than expected you know, 7% growth according to RBI uh, forecasts in the current year. Next year, should we worry that global growth will take away some? Yes. First, you know, uh, to, to claim some credit, uh, the growth rate has been stronger than expected by some. Uh, I had been saying it is going to be higher than 7%. I, I recall that and many congratulations to you. And I was wondering at that time that you were uh, almost, a, you know, a, a soul voice claiming that we would do 7%. I was really surprised, but kudos to you. So, uh, so for us, I think, you know, um, uh, uh, I see prospects very good. Uh, uh, for a number of reasons, you know. I, I'm speaking of FI24. You think it can continue to be a good year? I, yes, I think so. Well, FI24, uh, meaning... Uh, okay, is this... Remaining... Sorry, FI25, do you think? Or, you know, the worry is only that there could be global uh, slowdown pulling us back. Yeah. So, at least the U.S. economy, I don't see, it, is, is about to slow down. Uh, I also have a little different view on this, that even the global economy slows down, if we have our house in order, 
uh, uh, I don't see a reason for us to slow down because after all the global economy is extremely large. Our problem is not whether the global economy is rising fast enough. Our problem is, you know, can we really try to get a larger slice of what already exists? Um, it's a very large market and uh, uh, therefore, you know, uh, our effort has to be to get a larger slice get of the global markets. economy. There are other factors which uh, seem to me to be working quite favorably now. Uh, uh, first of all, you know, the, uh, uh, when, when the U.S. interest rates begin to drop, uh, evidently foreign investment will return in larger uh, tranches now. Uh, so, so, you know, the initial bit of uh, uh, higher interest rates moving capital out of India into the United yes. States, that phase is over and I, uh, and I think the reverse phase will begin. That's one factor. Uh, the other uh, set of things uh, uh, are that uh, the balance sheets of our own companies and the banks are now in fantastic shape actually, you know, uh, and I just came from the uh, Reserve Bank of India uh, and uh, uh, had uh, some conversations uh, yes. there and apparently, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the news from there basically is that the banks really have uh, uh, come back uh, very strong. So investments, I think, you know, the corporate investments would uh, be doing uh, mm -hmm. very well in, in the years to come. Okay. I, I'm coming to the domestic story in just a minute. Uh, my only point is, you know, I, I was first wanting to understand from you what kind of uh, slowdown the global economy might impact on us. One, because our services exports, which was doing very well, is now plateauing at about $28 billion a month. It's not going to 30. Uh, in fact, it was 30 in January. It's you know now averaging at 28 billion. It's not growing. And secondly, you can see software companies, all of them, uh, uh, dragging their feet. So that's why my question to you: whether the global uh, scenario can uh, cast some clouds. Macroeconomists uh, in India, you know, like to watch as, as elsewhere. You know, like to watch every month. <laughs> okay. uh, and and. Uh, a uh, lot of this anxiety, angst seems to come from watching the monthly figures. Monthly data. Uh, and I sort of really think a little longer term. Okay. Uh, and I'm not swayed by, uh, okay. you know, figures in a month or two months. Uh, I will come to the longer, uh, quest longer term questions on services exports as well. But first let me finish uh, with the near term. Now, one of the reasons, one of the reasons why we have been able to do very well is that government capex has been strong. And government capex has been strong because we've been taking the liberty of higher fiscal deficit. This year itself, 5.9% for the center, 3% for the states, is nearly 9% uh, general uh, deficit. Uh, you know, and it has been even more. It was 10, 11% in previous years. So we've got a 7% plus growth when deficit is 9%. We have to bring it down. So do you think that there can be even internal breaks to growth? First of all, I will contest the assertion that this is largely the story of the <coughs> government uh, public sector capex rising. That has been rising, no doubt. Uh, <coughs> but uh, all said and done... The government we, capex rose dramatically. Yes, this yes, it's dramatically, you know, but what is the share of the government in the total investment? Yes. Uh, it's not very large, no, uh, and so you know, even if it doubles, it doubles, you know, from two percent to four percent of That's the GDP, it. and it's only the central governments, you know. Uh, so, uh, uh, if if capex is rising, <coughs> which seems to me from the figures, like you know, uh, I haven't checked the very recent ones, the second quarter uh, figures that came in, but before that, we were at at least thirty-four percent. Um, mm. Uh, now that's uh, uh, obviously cannot happen because of the uh, uh, government alone. Yeah, I mean because you know the, the government uh, capex ex increase is at most two percentage points of GDP. Yes. Uh, 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 but yes. but uh, the rest has to be coming from the private sector, pretty clean now. Third uh, uh, balance sheet for the economy, household. Yes. Household savings have been falling. Yes. Net household savings 5.1 percent, the last yes. number from the Reserve Bank. Is that likely to be a, uh, I'm just throwing uh, yes. obstacles, yes. Uh, I'm yes. trying to be devil's advocate, yes. would that be a worry? Yes. Um, I think th there has been a bit of a longer term trend there and uh, we do need the household financial savings to rise. Uh, I, I think, you know, that is a weak spot. Uh, uh, it has been there, I mean, it's not a new weak spot, it has been there for a while now. No, uh, you know, uh, let me stop you, sir. The, at the NCAR Nimrana conference, yes. uh, your colleague uh, Poonam presented a paper where she pointed out that this is the first year when 
uh, household savings is less than government borrowing. Government borrowing is 6% of GDP. Household savings has gone down to 5.1% of GDP. So there is a bit of a bother there that household savings is not even able to finance government. Right, but wait a minute. So I have to understand those figures. I mean, is it because the household savings has fallen as a percentage of GDP? Or no, household it, it, debt has risen, she said. Uh, yeah. So net household but, savings but, has But fallen. in the end, you know, the, the government has been borrowing a lot more yes. than in the yes. past, right? Yes. So, so that, that equation may be <laughs> off simply because the government uh, borrowing has uh, expanded quite dramatically. Basically, you're saying that you do see a, a, a next year and a medium term growth of 7% as possible? Oh, of course. 7% more certainly. Okay. Uh, I, I think, you know, we'll have to pack up and leave if uh, we can't grow at 7%. 7%. Okay, well, let me take a break on that optimistic note, but I'm going to come back and ask some medium-term challenges uh, from you. Uh, we are back in a minute with more questions to Professor Panagaria. Welcome back to this special economics with uh, Professor Arvind Pandagarya. He was heading uh, the Niti Aayog until recently. Now, of course, uh, continues to be Professor of Economics at uh, Columbia. Uh, Professor Pandagarya, thank you very much for, for your patience. Uh, the medium-term challenge for the economy could be AI. I mean, we don't know how artificial intelligence will pan out, but the fear is that it may take away accounting jobs. Now, our services exports are all in those areas. So, would you worry that AI can put some breaks in the medium term? So, look, you know, this will still have to unfold. We don't know exactly how it's going to work out. Mm -hmm. But all the past episodes I have known of uh, innovations uh, which sort of result in automation and supposedly therefore a threat to jobs, um, in the end, uh, the aggregate le level of jobs seems to remain unimpacted. Okay. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you can look up, go back uh, uh, when the laptops began coming. Uh, um, it only increased internet. Uh, You know, the nature of jobs changed. Uh, uh, we had a lot of, we used to have many typists. Uh, typists were replaced by, you know, uh, 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 different More kind of data skills, programmers, yeah, yes. you know, program, data programmers, or different, you know, folks with different, sk different skills. Uh, but I've never seen, you know, uh, automation leading to aggregate loss of jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, 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 it requires change in the nature. So it's change in the nature. So it creates pain points for sure. You know, people who uh, 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 at least temporarily uh, mm -hmm. may be displaced uh, may have to go in and retrain, etc. But in the end, the impact really, and especially when once we get to the medium term, uh, impact has almost always been positive. You know, okay. uh, 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 in the end, we have ended up with higher productivity and yeah. therefore higher incomes. To come back to the other medium term challenge, of which very, you know, we have very little uh, confidence, climate. Uh, do you think that can reduce potential growth, both Indian and global potential growth? Well, look, this challenge has been with us for a while now. And uh, so far, I don't see that it has uh, led to uh, a slowdown in growth. Um, uh, certainly not something that can be actually directly attributed to the climate change. Uh, uh, once again, it's, it, it's, it's, you know, where investments go, that will change. Uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, growth happens, which sectors grow faster, which sectors grow slower. Um, all that will happen. Right, but you know, on the one hand, if fossil fuel uh, fuels decline, um, green uh, energy will it rise. Will come, yes. uh, so, you know, uh, again, uh, um, I don't see uh, you know little things one can observe. In the end, for me as an economist, I want to look at well, what does it all add up, add up to? to? And when we add it all up to, I I don't see that this is again going to derail yeah. uh, anything in, a, in 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 any serious way. Homo, hopefully the homo sapien will solve the problem. Yes. Uh, well, we have done that. I mean, yes. we have done that. So, yes, you know, certainly. Uh, Let me come to uh, the more medium-term problem, or perhaps even more near-term, of the change in uh, geopolitics. Now, uh, we are seeing mo every country building barriers, and, you know, industrial policy has returned with a vengeance in every country. But are we doing the right thing? Uh, we have started going slow on PLIs after a bunch of them. But is that the way to go? raise tariffs, give subsidies, 
do you fear that we may create inefficient firms? Yes, I think you know that's something I have said uh, for a while now. That uh, in the end, particularly when you do it with protection, see subsidies worry me a little bit less. They are also they are also source of worry, but uh, less so for the simple reason that you know you can't sustain subsidies for a very long period of time, and you'll have to withdraw. And the firms themselves also know that mm -hmm. the subsidies will eventually go away. So you know, so any big thing happens, for example, things like Foxconn coming in. Yeah. I think they are very happy that they are getting the subsidy, yeah. but I don't think that's what is driving them. Yeah. I mean, you know, a, a, a large manufacturer such as that will not come uh, mm -hmm. attracted yeah, just subsidies. by the subsidy because they have a time horizon of 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. They are looking at the global marketplace. Uh, that's where they would ultimately want to sell mm. and the subsidies for a short period of time are not going to solve their long-term problems mm. so uh, uh, That worries me less, okay. but I think protection when we impose tariffs uh, That actually has a tendency to stay because it generates revenue So therefore the government is never under pressure to withdraw them uh, and uh, a lot of small firms enter yes. you see uh, and particularly, and then there is a lobby to continue the subsidies. There is there is lobby to continue, and there is also just general fear that you know if we now r remove this protection, then uh, the firms will uh, go out of business Lost and jobs. will have unemployment and all. You know, uh, 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 policymakers don't think in terms of so you reallocation. Think we should ration uh, PLIs uh, or avoid these kinds of policies. I would, you know, because look. It is also an issue, both protection and PLI we ought to avoid for the simple reason that you know you can create certain sectors with these instruments, but you cannot, I don't think you can actually grow manufacturing overall. Okay. And, and that is the crux of the matter, that you know everybody will have the ability to claim successes, that look you know we did this intervention and such and such industry got created. My issue really is that has it resulted in a larger manufacturing sector overall? Okay. I mean, if I'm really creating these sectors, expanding these sectors by moving capital from some of the other sectors, then the other sectors are paying for it. Yes. And I'm not getting any far with overall manufacturing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what India really needs is for overall manufacturing as a proportion of the GDP to grow and grow rapidly. We cannot grow with this 5%, 6% kind of manufacturing growth. We need 12 to 15 percent manufacturing growth, you know. That is what most of the successful countries like yeah. South Korea, Taiwan, China, Singapore, they all did that. 12 to 15 percent growth in manufacturing. That is what we need to put out and that requires putting all the reforms in place. In the end, we are not going to get there. You know, What would they be, sir? There is a set of labor laws which have been enacted by the parliament but still not implemented. We ought to go in and implement those. I think now, you know, probably this will happen after the May 24 elections, but I think that ought to be very high up on the agenda. Uh, uh, and then, uh, my view is that on some of the dimensions, these reforms don't go far enough, but they do provide space to the states mm. to carry those reforms further up. So we'll need to, you know, encourage at least half a dozen of the states mm. to take these reforms much further. I, I think we cannot really uh, uh, capture the global marketplace through Unless we are competitive. Tariffs. Unless we are competitive and, and, and uh, uh, the only way it can happen is if we uh, uh, open up, you know, mm. give the level playing field, you know, because remember that protection is given only to the import competing industries. That's where it is, you know, industry, there is an export industry, uh, you can give export subsidy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the instrument that, that you use to stimulate the export sector is through export subsidy, which hardly anybody ever gives. Absolutely. Uh, and so, it automatically puts the export industries at a disadvantage. And if you are going to export less, there is no way to import more. Oh, I mean, there's not, you know, you, you, you are going to cut imports as well. Uh, so, you are de-globalizing. Yes. I mean, it's ultimately this results in deglobalization and that's not something what we need and finally i think we need a bit more focus uh, 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 you know there are a lot of pain points in the system and and uh, uh, if we could really address these pain points uh, uh, for the entire economy well and good that's the first best but if we can't do it let us you know i have advocated these coastal zones or whatever you know these economic zones 
and and try to solve these pain point problems within in enclaves within enclaves and and if we do that you know then none of this other kind of support you know the, the, the whole thing is that uh, uh, the industry comes in and says i've got this 15% disability and so then we give them the crutches, crutches. Uh, uh, of of a 15% tariff or a 15% uh, uh, production subsidy but that's not the way to, to, to really stimulate the manufacturing sector. Fair point, fair point sir. Professor Panagaria, thank you very much for sparing time for us at CNBC TV 18. Always a pleasure to be with you, Lata. Thank, thank you. you very much for watching this special edition of Indianomics.